listeners, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I am here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? I'm doing okay. How are you? Uh, I've been better. I've been healthier. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, well, me too, <laughs> <laughs> I, I suppose. Uh, I heard that Taylor Swift won the Super Bowl. Yes, yeah, I don't know. That's, that's, a, that's a thing in my house right now. <laughs> yeah, that's, that must be very exciting for her. I guess so. <laughs> I I don't understand. I, I don't how that even. Works, I was but, gonna say I don't even pretend to understand it. <laughs> yeah. No, I I mean I I definitely assumed going in that um that it would be the Chiefs that won. Yeah. Because otherwise, what's the point of her dating that guy, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, and that's if you believe that the fix isn't already in. So. Oh, I absolutely believe the fix is in. I yeah. you know, yeah. it's so. Like I said, I follow football, pretty big football fan here. Um, and I absolutely thought that the 49ers was the better team. But I knew better than to pick them to win because it's the Chiefs. Like, the, it's just, I mean, whether the fix is in or not, the Chiefs just have this, like, way about them. Like, you don't, you don't kind of like Alabama football. Mm-hmm. Like, you just don't want to bet against them, you know? Even when they're not, I mean, because clearly to me, they're not the better team. Like have the they 40, won a Super Bowl before? Yeah, they won it last year. Oh, really? Yeah. Did we have the same conversation last year? It's possible. But the Chiefs (laughs) just, the Chiefs is one of those teams that just finds a way to win. Um, Now, they didn't do that through the regular season because they sucked all the way through the regular season. Well, how did they make it to the Super Bowl? They, by the skin of their teeth. And then in the playoffs, then they dominated. They, They barely made it to the playoffs by the skin of their teeth. And then once they got in, they dominated. Well, um, that's the way to do it, I guess. I guess so, right? <laughs> it, when that, it matters. Yeah. I mean, that definitely was them this year. But they're not a loaded team. I mean, they've got Mahomes and Kelsey, and that's really it. Like, the rest of the team Oh, that is, guy's actually good? He's good. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's good. What position does he play? He's a tight end. So. But, okay. Yeah. But like I say, as far as, as far as the receivers, the receivers are all garbage. Mm-hmm. Um, so... Anyway, it was it, like I say, I went in the bed against them, and it turns out that was the smart thing to not do because. Well, the smart thing to do would have been to bet for, for them. them. Yeah. Yeah, but I can't bring myself to do that. So here we are. Okay. <laughs> Besides, this is Alabama. All that shit's illegal. Yeah. Well, not that stuff. Th- all that stuff. Damn. Yeah. I said that right at the beginning. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah. Uh, Nobody I'm, caught that. I'm pretty sure you can do it online, though. I mean, those, there's apps for all of that now. I'm pretty sure you can legally do that. I mean, maybe not. I don't know. I, I, I don't I have any of those. It's still not supposed to be legal, but I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I, like I said, I don't do any of that. So I play my fantasy football and that's it. Is that legal? Actually, all that other stuff is probably going to be legal because the fantasy football is legal. Well, um, like fantasy football, even the players can play fantasy football. One of the players that I had on my team this year is a huge fantasy football player. So... Um, they, they, yeah, which I did think was strange that, so they can't gamble, but they can, I mean, it's almost like a fantasy is almost like a strange form of gambling. I think it's a form of gambling. I, I would, I'd agree. So, mm, but uh, they, they, they're Pete allowed. Rose to, has been kept out of the major league baseball's hall of fame because he bet for his team. <laughs> right. <laughs> so hmm. oh, well. I don't know. Strange world we live in. Then. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think that we should just let them all bet on their teams if they want to or against yeah. them that and you just keep track you just like <laughs> yeah make note of who's voting against their own team and yeah <laughs> keep that in mind when yeah. as you watch them play and the referees too <laughs> yeah right. those are the people really to watch yeah well those are the people that are, <laughs> i mean they have the biggest control over the game yeah. you know so sorry all right hang on i mean <laughs> you're all right over there no i just Oh wow! You just pulled a knife on me. <laughs> <laughs> I was. <laughs> I just needed to get it out from off of my belt. Well, I'm just gonna warn you: don't bring a knife to a gunfight. Like, keep that in mind next time you pull that knife on me. <laughs> hey, at this distance, I can you get think to you, you got first. the better odds. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you're probably absolutely. right. <laughs> <laughs> at, probably. at this distance, I I like my chances. Yeah, you're <laughs> probably right about that. Especially in your current state. Yeah. Well, there's that, right? <laughs> Well, I suppose that we have some things to talk about. Um, I don't know where to start. I, I think I want to start with the the Tucker Carlson's Putin interview. Oh, okay. Did you watch it? I haven't. I do mm-hmm. plan to. I, I'd like to. I mean, I've I've seen a lot of the coverage on it, but I haven't actually taken it in myself. Okay. Uh, I <laughs> I generally find 
Vladimir Putin pretty fascinating. Yeah. Um, I don't want to say I wish we had leaders like that because I don't know that that's the kind of leader that I want exactly, yeah. but I wish we had leaders that were that caliber of person. Yeah. Um, he's just, he's just impressive. He's, yeah. he's smart. He's very cool. Um, <laughs> he, uh, he was well prepared in, in this case. I, I think he might've been listening to our show. You think so? <laughs> yeah. Um, He's very good, especially when he's being challenged by Americans when they're saying, um, you know, are you going to do this? What about this terrible thing that you did? And he said, what about this terrible thing that you did? Yeah, it's really (laughs) easy to throw that one right back at us. It is. It's not like we've made all kinds of righteous decisions and they're a force for good in the world. Right. You know. Right. And he... And I wish we were, by the way. Like, for the people that are going to hail me for that, like, Mm -hmm. I wish we were, because Mm -hmm. we could be. Yes. But we're clearly not. Yes. Yeah, exactly. He's, um, I mean, I don't know exactly what was expected. I know that some people complained about the beginning of it where he did about, uh, like 45 hundred years of <laughs> Russian history. Yeah. Uh, I get where you would find that kind of boring. You got to turn farther away. I know. Um, just sneaks up. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I get where you'd find that kind of boring. I found it really interesting. I think Russian history is is really interesting generally. Yeah. So my um, understanding is he did kind of gloss over some things, like um, Stalin. Okay, um, that's probably fair. Uh, I mean, that was like I say, I haven't heard it yet, but that was just one of the commentators that was talking about was like, you know, he kind of yada yada over some areas. And that was the big one, I think, was like, yeah, you know, and then Stalin took over and he moves right past Stalin, you know, and everything that happened under him. Yeah. So, but you would expect from, I mean, he's the leader of a country. He can't sit, he's not going to, on the world stage, like he knows he was on in that interview, he's Mm -hmm. not going to talk negative about his country. Like, I mean, it's just not his job. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Um, Well, that's certainly true. I mean, I... I would like to say that at least historically you wouldn't have gotten a president in an interview that would like no. talk about George W. Bush the way that he should be talked about or yeah. um, Woodrow Wilson or, you know. Um, yeah. So I understand that. On, on the other hand, I do think that he he seemed to try to focus on parts of Russian history that affected their relationship with Ukraine. Okay. And Stalin's time didn't really yeah i okay. mean he he definitely could have talked about well as you know as we converted to um socialism in the soviet union uh there you know some people starved i like that's a part that got left out <laughs> that that's was not sure. mentioned yeah. Yeah. yeah and and that's relevant um but a lot of it was <coughs> about just kind of the russian relationship with ukraine um how the empire itself kind of grew out of Kiev to begin with and then um, moved over to Moscow, but then reintegrated that part into the, into the empire and um, how the current state of Ukraine didn't exist 60 years ago. Yeah. That, uh, you know, a bunch of territory was ceded to the, the state surrounding, you know, centered in Kiev um, that didn't belong to Kiev, really, that was Russian, you know, talking about the Donbass and talking about the yeah. the southern portion of Ukraine and Crimea and so forth. That is relevant. I mean, he certainly left out the part where there was, um, they were moving ethnic Ukrainians out of that territory or um, at the very least importing Russian ethnic background people into that territory to have superiority majorities. Yeah. That's also a point that was left out. I mean, yeah. so yeah, I, I can certainly understand. He did have a, <coughs> he did have an agenda. Oh well, yeah, obviously. I mean, uh, but I found it kind of interesting. I mean, I, I, there were definitely parts in there that I didn't know anything about, and I've yeah, you done consider some yourself pretty versed, right? <laughs> well, no, I mean that's I mean, more than most. I would say probably most more than most Americans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, that's what I mean, Americans. Yeah. J- but you know, really, like I said, just because I find it interesting, that's such an so much of Russia is pretty inhospitable for fair portions of the year. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that that just produces an interesting kind of people. Yeah, 
Well, <laughs> I mean, like I said, I haven't really watched the interview, but I will say just speaking to Putin, like it is weird to see a country with like a strong leader that seems competent and like knows what he's talking about and understands the history of his country. Because that's something that um, I had mentioned to you is that I, I can't imagine any U.S. representative of any caliber mm -hmm. that could give a good, concise history of the U.S. Yeah, and we've got uh, about a thousand years less of history to deal yeah, with. Exactly, and because that was kind of my thing. I mean, like I say, say what you will about him, like monologuing on him, but mm -hmm. like I say, he knows that stuff and he understands it. And I, like I say, I think you would you would struggle to find a member of Congress that could do that. Yeah. Um. I. It, well, and I think that there's, it's a, the history of Russia is important to them. Yeah. Like it is a part of their identity. And I think that's less true for Americans. Mm -hmm. I don't think that that was always less true for <laughs> Americans. I mean, I think for probably a couple hundred years after the founding of the U S the history of the U S was an important part of the identity of Americans. Yeah. Um, now the history of the U S is kind of being rejected. Yeah. And it, you know, like Patriot is a bad word now. Yeah, right. And I, I, yeah, I agree. I think the, probably the most impressive part, you know, you talk about him talking about roughly 1300 years of Russian history um, and all the other things that he addressed through the course of a two hour and 15 minute interview or two hour and 10 minute interview, whatever it was. Yeah. He sat down there. He had no notes. Yeah. He yeah. he wasn't referencing anything. He was he yeah. was just he was just talking off the top. Just of his off head. the dome. Yeah. And it's not like <clears throat> you can't assume that he didn't prepare. <clears throat> like he had an agenda, of course, and he I'm sure he's you know he studied up on Tucker and <coughs> tried to figure out what kinds of questions he would likely be having to answer. And yeah. he certainly steered the conversation in in ways. Um, if there was something that he didn't want to address directly, I guess, but. Uh, even that is kind of impressive to sit down there with a with an interviewer who at least can be harsh. Yeah, I don't think that Tucker was particularly in this case, although he challenged him. Yeah. Um, but I, and generally, I think that Tucker Carlson's a, a fairly smart guy. I I don't know. I can say if I can say that with any real authority, like I've barely watched Tucker Carlson, but he, the, the, I, I don't watch a lot of Tucker, but what I've watched of him, I consider him to be an intelligent guy. Yeah. I mean, he seems like somebody does his research and at least prepares and has things in his head and yeah. is able to challenge the people that he's interviewing and so forth. And yeah. I think that one of the things that was clear there is that uh, Vladimir Putin's a lot smarter than him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is just I mean, what it just, is, yeah. Yeah. Um, <coughs> but there were some interesting things that came out of that, too. I, I mean, I, you know, again, probably if you're listening to our show, they weren't, there wasn't any groundbreaking. No revolution, you, revelations, yeah. Yeah, but, um, you know, he was very clear about uh, the West and Boris Johnson specifically ending um, ending the peace negotiations that they had just a couple months into the war in Ukraine. Yeah. And that they had a tentative agreement that was hundreds of pages, uh, that had been signed by the negotiator from Ukraine, that they had a, a deal on the table that people had on the whole accepted. M yeah. I mean, details to be worked out, I'm sure, but yeah, like, but a you good know, for framework. the most part, yeah, a strong framework for peace yeah. that was accepted by both sides that got submarined by the West. Yeah. I mean, we knew that already, but he, you know. Yeah. Um, he, he talked about the West destroying Nord Stream. That was actually kind of interesting yeah. part just because of. <laughs> the way he was teasing Tucker Carlson about about doing it <laughs> about well no about trying to join the CIA oh, yeah. wanting to be a CIA guy yeah. and he I don't know I'm not I'm not totally I think he was making fun of everybody in that it was it seemed good natured yeah. in a lot, like a charismatic way of teasing yeah. um, Tucker Carlson about wanting to be a CIA and, and he was you know he's like CIA is a strong organization and 
Um, I understand that you tried to join them uh, back in the day. It's a good thing for everybody that they didn't let you in. And like, you know, kinda, <laughs> yeah, right. I, I, know. I thought it was, I thought it was funny. Yeah. Um, but, uh, and he didn't, I mean, something interesting out of that is that he didn't have any proof either. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, if he'd had proof, he would have presented it there, I'm sure. Yeah, that would and have been an opportunity. Yeah. Um, but he, you know, he went through it the same way that we kind of did at the very beginning when it first happened and they were all blaming Russia. And we were like, well, wait a minute, let, uh, let's back up here and see who stands to gain. Yeah. And yeah. Um, follow the money, man. Yeah, Russia certainly didn't stand to gain and Europe didn't stand to gain either. The... Yeah. The country that stood stood to gain the most, the countries that stood to gain the most were the Ukraine and the U.S., and the Ukraine doesn't really have the capability. Yeah. And by the way, we talked about submarine and that thing for a long time. It's, I mean, that, yeah, oh, yeah. there's plenty of, like, Biden's on record just kind of insinuating that yeah. something bad might we happen. We will end the Nord Stream by yeah. yeah. So. Um, I, uh... Yeah, I, I thought it was a really, I thought it was a really fascinating interview, and I thought he came off as being very impressive and very reasonable. And another one of the important things that came out of it was um, he expressed a willingness to negotiate and yeah. said, "We've never turned down negotiations on this. Yeah. Um, that we want to see a, <coughs> a a settled peace agreement in Ukraine." Yeah. But he said, "You know, look, we have been." But they're there. But they're there for over. a reason. Yeah, we we've been pressured yeah. over and over and over and over again. Yeah. Um. That y you know you claim all this extra territory and then you put missiles down and then you support the um the uh, Chechnyan revolution and then you put more missiles down and then you accept countries that we said can never be a part of NATO a, a lot, an alliance against us. You reject us. You you know. Yeah. There, you you accused us of rigging your election. I mean, I don't know if he mentioned that. I don't but, remember that coming up. But, but I'm just saying, like, like that's that's a thing. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. I just thought it was interesting. People should yeah. listen to it. You know. Yeah. The guy comes off as being totally reasonable. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, maybe he is, maybe he isn't. But he stood up there with all the world to see and said, hey, we're ready to negotiate a peace agreement here. And yeah. we were ready to negotiate one before. And we had one. And you guys ended it. And yeah. So who's being unreasonable here? Yeah. Well, it's, it's a question worth considering <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Um, <coughs> so that's that's really all I've got about that, I guess. Yeah. Um, the, the is Was there something in the coverage you looked at that... No, I mean, like I say, I mean, really kind of what I was saying before with just it's it it is annoying to me being an American that that none of our elites are nearly that impressive. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, that's just uh, I mean, that was my big thing about it. Like it just it, it's like it's frustrating. Like, I mean, we've got people in this country that are like that. Mm -hmm. They're just not in Congress. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or running for president. Yeah, or, they, you know. they haven't really assumed leadership roles, at least not in. Yeah. At the federal level, I um, well, I you know I've said for a long time that uh, democracy attracts exactly the wrong kind of person. Yeah. To be a leader, so. Yeah. So maybe we should move more into the Russian style. <laughs> I'm I'm shaking my head here. Yeah, I, like, I don't. Know I don't that. know about all that either. But yeah, <laughs> no, not real excited about that prospect either. But yeah. Uh, it, it certainly produces more impressive leaders. Yeah. Uh, something to that. Yeah. <laughs> um, that wasn't always true though. We had impressive leaders at one time. Yeah. I, I guess the, the system just degrades. It's well, like what it's, I was talking well, about. It's the with culture the, though. Like the culture is degrading too. Well, but the, the system degraded first though. I think the kind of people that were in office yeah. became less impressive before our culture started to fall apart. I, yeah. I mean, it, it's like what I was talking about with the um, family and children's services last week, yeah. that it's a good organization right now because it doesn't have a lot of money. But yeah. if it got a lot of money, I imagine it would draw the, the kind of corruption yeah. into its ranks that 
yeah. that any well-funded government organization does. Yeah. Um, I think that, you know, that's just how it works is where, and it's not to say that that doesn't work the same. And, and for those of you that pointed out to me that, yeah, it works the same in, in private business too. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Like it does, um, wherever the money is draws in corruption. Yeah. It, it's true. Private yeah. or public. Yeah. Um, the difference is one of those groups has authority over me. Yeah. And one doesn't. And one of those groups is limited by the market. And one isn't. <laughs> exactly. And so it's not to say that there's not corruption in, in private business that where there's a lot of money. It absolutely is. But the the level of corruption is limited in some way by the fact that they still have to have <laughs> customers. Yeah. I mean, there's still a cleansing mechanism mm -hmm. where government has no cleansing mechanism. Exactly. Except for voting, but nobody knows what they're voting about anyway. Yeah. Well, and I, and I think that's even a cop out. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, mean well, look at you because look you at have it to here, look at though in this county. Yeah. Three quarters of the votes cast in any election are straight ticket votes. They don't even know the names of the people they're voting for. Yeah, it's got got to be red mm -hmm. or blue. Or I blue, mean, it's yeah. it's like sixty six percent red and like ten percent blue, roughly. That yeah. uh, how the straight ticket vote straight goes, ticket goes. But, yeah. Um, but still, that's three out of four people that went in there and didn't even read the names on the ballot. <laughs> yeah, <All> right. <laughs> like the the minimal requirement that you would ask of any citizen. Yeah, the, know the, know the name, name of the person you want to vote for. Right. <laughs> oh man, like I can't imagine a lower bar. Like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. So, so yeah, straight ticket voting sucks. <laughs> yeah, it's stupid. <laughs> so I um I I would find it interesting if. Uh, not, not to take away political parties. I don't think that you can take away political parties. People are going to naturally group together into organizations that support the same things. It's fine. Yeah. I don't have any problem with political parties. I think that it would be interesting though, is if they just took the political party affiliation off of the ballot. Yeah. Still have the names on there, but yeah. take the affiliation off of the ballot so that you at least have to know who your guy is. Well, and, and get the, let's it. get the government out of that business anyway, like yeah. because the government runs the primaries for the red and the blue. Right. So like that's never made any sense to me. I still don't. I, to this day, I don't understand that. Yes. How, everybody remember that the red and the blue are private organizations. Yeah. They're private organizations, but their elections. They're yeah. They're. Yeah. And their elections are held with public funds through the public system system that which which on on its face sounds like oh well that's good that way we have good clean elections but at the same time it's like yeah but why why is it their business to do that they don't do that for the libertarians yeah libertarians got to figure it out and they still don't have good clean elections doesn't matter like the primary well, yeah. system's all kind of messed up oh exactly <laughs> so like it, it just it doesn't it's a strange way of doing things yeah so well, um, some more big news uh, was Trump's um, banning <laughs> from the ballot in Colorado, went to the Supreme Court. There's been no. some back and forth over the last week or so on that. This seems like a, this seems like it, this case is decided already. Yeah. I mean, um, that's definitely what it, what it seemed like from the questions and the responses and stuff. Yeah. It seems like for worst, the, like the most divided this case could end up being is like seven, two. Yeah. And I think, I mean, there's a lot of people saying that that's not even going to be the case. No, I don't think that, that it, will. That's that the it least, could actually end up unanimous. Like that would this. be really interesting. Um, essentially the arguments from the Supreme court are that, that this gave, gives the states too much power to decide for single states to decide the presidency, essentially. Yeah. Um, that, that, that individual states can't decide the presidency. There's also concern that if you allow Colorado to make this decision, that other states will remove the candidate that they don't like. And then you just have like, you know, 10 states that have <laughs> both candidates on the ballot and that's who's deciding the presidency. I don't think yeah. that's actually how it would work. Um, I think that you would actually see the big blue states dominate because of that. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, California, New York, uh, Illinois, you know. Yeah. There's, um, you know, Texas is purple enough that I don't think that they could get away with it. And Florida is also. Yeah. 
and the rest well, of your really big Florida's states. Florida's pretty red in these days. Well, but. that's true. Well, they, they supported DeSantis pretty strongly yeah. for the governorship. I don't think that... That they're as red as you think. I don't yeah. know. I, I, well, that's an interesting thing that only time will tell because there is there is a case to be made that a lot of people, a lot of red folks moved to Florida during the pandemic. Well, yeah, that might be. Um, I mean, but uh, Libertarian's been moving to New Hampshire for a while. Yeah, and <laughs> well, and that's the reason I say it's a time will tell thing. Like, I don't know if there's really anything mm-hmm. to that, but there's at least a case to be made for that. Yeah. Um, I, I think that that kind of system would result in a Biden re-election. Yeah. But I don't know. I Because it seems to me that most of the big states are blue. Are blue, yeah. No, there's definitely Or enough that, of a mix that... That it know, would work out that, that way. They, that they wouldn't end up putting somebody off of the ballot. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know, though. Uh, the, the point is well made, however, that... I, I, this is the argument that I think that they should be making. And it's not to say that it hasn't been a part of it. It just seems to be, have been a smaller part of it. Um, is that the state can't, the states can't remove a candidate from the ballot for a federal crime that he hasn't even been charged with. Yeah. <laughs> That's the way I would take it. Like the Colorado Supreme court court can't decide that Biden or that Trump was responsible for an insurrection if he wasn't even charged by the feds with an insurrection. Yeah, exactly. He wasn't even charged, Yeah, let alone convicted. Yeah, exactly. So uh, that, that seems to me to be the approach that I would take is that, okay, um, a state can't hold a, a candidate um, liable for federal charges that weren't even filed. Right. I mean, that, it seems... that seems like the easy way to, to argue this to me. Yeah. Um, it, it's going to be interesting when they put out their, their final opinion, um, how narrow it is, because I suspect that they will keep it very narrow. Yeah. It would be interesting if they made it a little broader about, you know, states not being able to remove candidates from the process, um, or, or, I don't know, you know, uh, just, but I, I suspect that it's going to be a very narrow decision so they don't, um, impinge too much on states. Sovereignty. Yeah. Yeah. Especially with this court. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So, but we'll see what happens. They, they expect to have their opinion out before Super Tuesday, which they kind of have to. <coughs> when is Super Tuesday? Uh, March something, March 5th, March, oh, I don't wow. know, early March. Early March, okay. Yeah. That's not far away. Nope. So, um, but that's been kind of an interesting process that's been going on. Yeah. Do you want to play a clip before we talk about Israel some more? <laughs> sure. Uh, <laughs> we can talk about a little economics before we go into Israel. All right, that sounds um, like fun. I I pulled this, this clip from No Agenda a couple of weeks ago. Uh, this... Uh, you know, um, Zoomers on TikTok complaining about capitalism. You'll hear. Here it is. <laughs> oh, let's hear it. I don't know who needs to hear this, but the majority of your struggles are because of capitalism. Having to spend the majority of your life in forced labor because getting your physiological needs met is gay kept behind a paywall is not how humans should be living their lives. Humans really have to pay money to stay alive. We have to pay for food. We have to pay for water. We have to pay for shelter. The universe put us on Earth, a planet that has everything humans need to survive, and yet we've evolved to the point where we have to pay money to stay alive. And we're working 40 to 60 hours a week, like on average, and we cannot afford to live. Like, we just do not make enough to pay rent, to pay for food. Everything is so expensive right now, and wages are not keeping up with the cost of living. And I think to myself, is it depression, or is it just the reality we're living in and accept? I think some of these kids maybe need to look into prehistory. Yeah, all right. 
Um, well, I now, know for not- a fact the one guy thinks it's too easy to live. Like that, that he's never been camping. Like he's never <laughs> yeah. he's never been out in the woods oh. for like a week. Yeah, forget prehistory. Just like send them on a camping join trip. The Boy Scouts. Yeah, no yeah. joke, man. You'll find out real quick. Surviving is this planet may give you everything you need. Yeah, it's all. But you got to go get it. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, this is what they don't understand is that they're trading labor for needs. Yeah, and before the market. You had to trade labor for needs. <laughs> the, this is this is never yeah. That, now, there's some points made in there. I mean, they're right about some things. <laughs> like, well, that um, was and that was what I was going to say as well. Like, it's I do understand. It, it's it's weird to wrap that message in. That that message is wrapped in some real problems. Oh yeah. Like, yeah. The the wages not keeping up thing for real. Like that's that's a thing. Mm-hmm. Um. And and we've got a lot of problems, but they're not problems. They're all problems created through government. They're not problems that are going to be solved through government. And the implication I'm at least taking away from what they're trying to say is that government can do something about this. Yeah, it's capitalism's fault, and the government can fix it. Yeah, that's that's kind of the point um, that I got out of it too. There's a yeah. second part. It's just more boring. Yeah, it's, uh, I, don't <laughs> I don't want to play it. Um, we're not a clip show, so yeah. But I did want that one out there. Yeah, they're right. Um, the wages aren't keeping up with the price of goods. Um, but this is this is a problem that's created by uh, the Federal Reserve. Yeah. Um, the the <coughs> the manipulation of the money supply by the government. And I know there's going to be people uh, like I've had even libertarians just like get on to me about the Federal Reserve is a private organization. <laughs> Okay. Technically, yes. Yeah, if you want to read like the letter of the law, but like it's. But yeah, the board is appointed by the government. It's all like. It, it, yeah, whatever. it's it's far from a private inner. It's it's not it's not laissez faire. Yeah, it's free a, market. It, this is a truly fascist bank. Yeah, that's what it really is. Yeah, absolutely. So fine, yes, it's technically private, but it's controlled by the government. So I don't, you know, it, yeah. they are not an independent bank. Yeah. Um. So yeah, there are definitely some problems in there, and and I think that those problems are uh, demonstrably caused by the actions of government, not by the free market. I mean, we're so far from a free market. And the thing that they don't understand, it seems to me, is how much better lives became for people once markets were established. Yeah. And those early markets, like, there's a huge difference between people specializing and going out and um, and finding food or growing crops or whatever and bringing it to a central place where you can trade something for those things instead of having to gather all that stuff yourself. Yeah. Uh, and that is the beginning of capitalism right there. That, yeah. What you're talking I mean, about in a, in a market there, that's <coughs> the beginnings of capitalism. Um, and yeah. what capitalism developed into was people specializing using the resources that they were able to um, to accumulate their capital to invest to create more resources. It made all of us wealthier. Yeah. And it's not to say that there's not problems with capitalism. There certainly are. But they're kind of, you know, what we promote, the free market, you know, free enterprise, laissez-faire form of capitalism has made everybody wealthier. Yeah. And... Again, so I, I wrote my thesis, my senior thesis in college about um, how farming was so terrible for us, yeah. uh, but that it was a necessity. But the problem was that um, foraging cultures tend to work roughly 25 to 30 hours a week. Yeah. Um, that includes travel time, preparation time, everything. Like every everything beyond that 25 to 30 hours a week was free time. Wow. But this is subsistence living. This it's is like, like hand to mouth, yeah, right? This yeah. is subsistence living. Yeah. And I understand that's also what they're complaining about here is that they they feel like they're living subsistently. Is that would that be the phrase? Yeah. Um now, and to some degree that they, they are, but they are far wealthier than any of those groups, than the like Kung San or something in, in sub Saharan Africa that are still living like, as a foraging, foraging. culture. Yeah. Um, 
you know, they have their cell phones and their TVs and their, you know, all their entertainment and so forth. Air they're, conditioning. Yeah, they're going out <laughs> drinking at nights probably. They're, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, you're still wealthier than all those people. You want to go back to that, then you're just like really romanticizing the past in a way that you don't understand. And yeah. you're right. They probably just need to go camping for a week. Yeah. I think you'll find out real quick how how all this works. Yeah. The, this planet may give you everything you need, but you got to go get it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah. The, the fish don't hop into your boat. <laughs> the deer doesn't dive onto your fire. Like, yeah. It's, it, it takes work. Yep. You know? Um, why? Water doesn't fall from the sky. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, okay, maybe know. it does I may sometimes. need to fact but... check that last one. <laughs> <laughs> there was one in there that I feel like, I don't know, I've seen it before. Yeah, yeah that, well, okay, fine. But even so, like, gathering water, you can it's say still... water is everywhere. Yeah, it is. Not but... drinkable water. Yeah, exactly. You have to do things to make it drinkable. Yeah. Um, starting a fire without a lighter... Or matches is yeah. way harder than you think. Oh yeah, no, nah. done yeah, I've it. done it before. I, I was gonna say I've done it before too. It Even sucks. flint and steel. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. You know, but if you're if you're doing friction to oh, create dude. a fire, yeah, that that'll wear you out. Yeah, a lot of labor I, involved there's a in lot that. Of labor. <laughs> yeah, a lot of labor. So, so um, I don't know. It just like wake up, kids. Yeah. The well, the scary your, your the, view of this world is. <laughs> severely skewed in a way in, in a, at a level of naivete that I can't even articulate. Yeah. The scary thing is, is that, that the message is wrapped in truth mm-hmm. and that, that people, a lot of people are latching onto this idea and this concept that, you know, uh, we shouldn't have to do this and, you know, capitalism's so bad and it's not capitalism. It's, and what we have is, is so far from capitalism, it's just crazy. Oh, it's a form of capitalism. Yeah, it's like cronyism. Yeah, well, that's that's the word that I've always preferred for our yeah. the system that we're that we're actually on the whole, I guess, functioning under. But but yeah. most interactions still are voluntary. Are are free market ish? Yeah, mostly. Yeah. Um, I think I don't even remember if this came up that recently. I, I feel like it did, but I'm gonna repeat myself if that's the case. So you even talk about, um, well, food's so expensive, like, but I have yeah. to buy food. Yeah. But which foods you buy are still an option. Like there's still a lot of choice out there and you can yeah. shift your buying habits into things that are less expensive. Yeah. Um, all these things are kind of coming up and down at the same, you know, at the same time. They're not, they're not synchronized though. Yeah. So what, what was it a year or so ago? Eggs had suddenly become really expensive. Yeah, they had gotten crazy expensive. I'm like, okay, well, you can get your protein from other places. Yeah. Um. So now eggs are back down. I think I, they they were until like a week or two ago. I think they've 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 started to creep back up again. Okay. Well, I yeah. have a mild egg allergy, so I don't. So you don't buy eggs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't buy eggs. Yeah. Um. Luckily, I can still eat things that have eggs in them. But if I like consume more than one egg. It's a problem for you. Yeah, I'm like doubled over in yeah. pain. But um, so I avoid that. <coughs> yeah. So eggs aren't really my thing. But, you know, yeah. y- you can switch from, you can even just switch brands on a lot of things. Like if you're just buying yeah. macaroni and cheese or whatever, you can go from Annie's or uh, Kraft or Velveeta or whatever to the store brands or something like that. It's all the same plastic. Yeah, I, it's uh, all the same plastic. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> That's not really true. I actually like Annie's. Annie's is oh, good. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, that don't mean it ain't full of plastic. Uh, yeah. Well, they say it's organic, but who knows? Yeah, who, yeah, who knows exactly? Who knows? Um, you know, the fruits you buy can change depending on season. Like, if you're intent on always buying strawberries, there's part of the year where that's going to be expensive. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but you can shift with the seasons. Whatever's in season, whatever's cheaper. I, I just like. You don't have to buy the same things all the time. And so you can say that, yeah, food's expensive, and but I have to buy food. But you you yeah. can buy cheaper food. Well, and that's the glory of living in a free country. Mm-hmm. You know, you can, no, nobody's telling you what you have to buy and what you have to do. If only we lived in a free country. <laughs> yeah, right. Because um, I have to buy insurance and I have to, but there's a lot of things that a I have to buy. A lot of things you buy. have to buy. Fair enough. Required by law. <laughs> Um, yeah. So, but that's exactly the point, right? Like those, that's not yeah. free market. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, and the like healthcare is a good example the, of, mm-hmm. and there's plenty of other other ones too. The more the government gets involved, the more problems that are created. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, like like healthcare is kind of like a, I don't know, like I fear it's at some kind of tipping point or something. Like, I mean, it's, it's definitely getting worse and worse. It's not getting better. Yeah. I mean, the biggest rise in my health care costs happened when uh, the Obama administration passed the Affordable Care Act. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's... and it's Ironic. Con- and huh? it's continued from there. Like, yeah. I mean, it's gotten steadily worse and worse. And the quality of the, the insurance is worse. You're paying more for worse insurance. Well, and I, it's, it's interesting to listen to... Um, Dr. Ron Paul yeah. talk about the changes in healthcare costs over the years, over his career yeah, and the causes. Um, I can't repeat all that because I just, I don't have the, because you the just same have, level you, ha- you don't have the same lived experience that yeah. he does. Um, but like, go listen to him talk about that. He'll tell you, Oh yeah. Well, back before the government got involved, a lot of services were offered for free for people that couldn't pay, mm-hmm. you know, there wasn't this big problem. All services were less expensive. Of course, you know, technology has developed too, but the general trend of technology is that it's expensive when it's first introduced. And as it becomes streamlined and the, the resources are available. So essentially like you discover a new way of, um, of taking images like, all right, at first there's not a whole lot of machines that do that. You know, so they're expensive. But as more and more machines get out there, then the cost goes down, the cost goes down, the cost goes down. Yeah, over time, the cost goes down. Yeah. TVs, when they were, those flat screen TVs, when they first were introduced, were astronomical. Yeah, ridiculously expensive. Yeah. Now you can buy like a 40 something inch TV for a couple hundred dollars. I was going to say, they're disposable at this point. Yeah. Yeah. If your TV breaks, you're not calling somebody out or you're not calling a repairman. Exactly. You just throw it in the trash and buy another one. (laughs) Exactly. Which is sad in its own way. But (laughs) yeah, it is. But but it is the truth. The last generation of people that know how things work. Yeah. Um, You know, phones might as well be magic to millennials and Zoomers. It's just. Yeah. um, Well, they're kind of magic to me, I'll, I'll admit. But I have some understanding of like transistors and <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and going back to the healthcare thing, um, you'd be doing good nowadays to find the doctor that's not part of some like infirmary or one of these big groups. Yeah. Like, there's just not that many private practices anymore. They do still exist, but mm-hmm. man, like they're there's, the minority. They're very, very few now. That's absolutely true. Um, the, the, and, this area is dominated by two companies. Yep. Yeah, and if you work in that field, hang on because they've got you. Yeah. That's that's the big thing that. And that, it became worse during COVID. Oh yeah, it got way worse during COVID. Mm-hmm. Um, they, they took over a bunch of, air, of things, and it's it sucks if you work in those fields because if you have a falling out with, let's just say like infirmary or whatever group you're with, there's only one other group to go with because you can't get a job anywhere. Like yeah. it's it's insane. Um, that's. That's how monopolies work. And the thing is, is it's it's not this isn't a monopoly that's forming through a free market. Mm-hmm. It's because the government is so involved that the that I mean it's becoming monopolized. Yeah. It it became more monopolized during COVID because the government <laughs> was giving out so much money. Yeah. And the these big companies got so much money that oh, they yeah. were able to buy out little private practices everywhere. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. What do you do? Yeah. yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So, um, anyway, I just, I I found that interesting that they, there's, I don't know how it's hard to push back against the narrative that this is all because of the, of capitalism, Yeah. because to some degree they're right. It is partly because of capitalism, but not the kind of capitalism that we promote, not a free market capitalism. It's a captive capitalism. It's cronyism. Yeah. And, um, the government (laughs) involvement create so many of these problems and that if you could just get government out of it, a lot of these problems would resolve themselves. Yeah. The problem is, is the, the issue is getting the government out of anything that it's currently involved Mm -hmm. in. Which is why I was making the argument to you last week about immigration that, you know, the answer isn't to strengthen the power of the government and law enforcement on the borders. Yeah. Because once that's done, it's done. Yeah. Like there's no bringing it back. No, there's no getting control of the border and then letting go. Yeah. Like that's not how it works. Yeah. Any powers that you give them to control the border, they will always have. Yeah. 
Well, I'm okay with them controlling the border. So. But that that's not the only use for those powers, though. Yeah. You no, know. I agree with that. Uh, yeah. There, I'm with you. <laughs> so that's the danger. Yeah. Um, okay, one more thing. We All right. What, wrap else, up. what else you got? Uh, just this un- UNRWA, UNRWA um, the UN Relief Organization that uh, UNRWA is what is the UN Relief <coughs> I don't remember what the acronym stands for exactly. But anyway, yeah. um, Israel uh, has claimed that UN- UNRWA, um, that some employees of UNRWA were responsible or, excuse me, involved in the October 7th attacks. Okay. And in response to that, the U.S. and some other Western countries has withdrawn support to this relief organization. Okay, so it is like a relief organization. It's a relief organization. Yeah. Um, now, UNRWA themselves have said that they um, that they term that uh, terminated sounds bad in this context. So I'm going to use a different word. That they fired uh, the like dozen roughly employees that um, Israel said were was involved in some way with the attacks. Yeah. And they're they're making the claim that they like use the relief organization to smuggle weapons into Gaza or something, you know, something along those lines. It does seem like if you're going to do that, that'd be a good way to do it. Sure. Uh, Now. I'm sure they're not the first ones to think of this. Yeah. UNRWA has (coughs) thousands of employees. Yeah. And the Israel accused like a dozen of them and UNRWA immediately fired them. Yeah. Now, Israel has not provided any evidence Okay. No evidence. So it's all accusations. It's all accusations. They've provided no evidence whatsoever of these claims that they're making. Yeah. Um, But just making the claim was enough. To cost some people their jobs. To cost some people their jobs and to cost the organization itself a lot of money. Um, Yeah. You, like I said, U.S. pulled out of support for UNRWA and some other uh, nations did as well. Um even though they don't have any evidence of this. Yeah. And the Israel has been using this as an excuse to prevent aid crossing the border into Gaza. That's interesting. Yeah. So we are getting to the point where um, people in Gaza are starting to die of uh, starvation and so forth. Yeah, so um, I heard something like, over 50% of the homes in Gaza were dest- have been destroyed. Yeah, I've heard it's something like like 60 plus percent of residential buildings have been destroyed in Gaza. So you've got to think like so even if the war if if Israel pulled out and just like like quit attacking today. Mm-hmm. Like this isn't going to end for a long time. Yeah, a bunch of people are homeless. Yeah. Uh no water, no power, no food. Yeah. <coughs> So theoretically, even if Israel like turned the table and decided that they were going to go in and start helping them and, and, and doing all these things for the Palestinians, there's still going to be massive casualties for yes. years to come here. Yeah. Um, and that's if we don't, if they were going to turn on the head and do the right thing, which clearly they're not. Um, I mean, I just, that to me, that seems like enough in itself to call this a genocide. Well, if you want to add a little bit more support to that, besides what we've already given in previous podcasts, um, Itamar Ben Gavir, who's the Minister of National Security, in the last week said, uh, "We should just shoot women and children who get too close to the border fence." Oh yeah, I mean, well, <laughs> said exactly that. Like, that those were his words. Yeah. If if they get too close to the border, <laughs> we should just shoot the women and children. Wow, that's. Yeah, and I'm a bit of a border hawk, and I think that's an extreme. <laughs> yeah, you weren't uh, you weren't supporting uh, Donald Trump's put alligators in the moat and uh, uh, well, broken glass on the top of the wall or whatever. Only only as a deterrent. <laughs> okay, right, right. Um, I'm sure that's how Edomar Ben Gavir meant it too. He was, oh, he was just saying it in publicly so that the, yeah. um, the so people wouldn't do it. Palestinians wouldn't do it, even though you know. Yeah. They don't have any internet or any way power. to get the message right. right. <laughs> wow. So, um, yeah, they're uh, they're doing everything they can to limit any aid going into Gaza. And uh, we talked about Yemen a couple of weeks ago too. 
I think that was before the interview. So it's been a month. Um, but they had almost 400,000 dead in Yemen and half of them were due to starvation yeah. and disease and so forth. And so you already have, a th- we're on 30,000, I think at this point, yeah. um, Palestinian civilians dead. Maybe they're not all civilians fine, but something but like 70% of them are. Yeah. Exactly. Um, at, at the very least, actually, that's a yeah. conservative estimate. 70% of them, because 70% of them are women and children. Yeah. Um, I, I heard, I think it's, it's definitely over 12,000 <laughs> kids dead at this point. And that's from the bombing. Yeah. And so this is a this is a small population to begin with. It's just over two million. Uh, it's two and a quarter million. Well, not anymore. Yeah. Um, and uh, they've already lost thirty thousand from direct action by the Israelis, and now we're looking at starvation and disease and so forth taking over. Yeah. And I mean, um, I just I don't see how you call it any more than what it is. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's just. I mean, I know that there's strict defin that the UN uses strict definitions for these things, but I just mm-hmm. under any definition, I don't see how it's anything other than ge- um, genocide. Yeah, um, I, yeah, I don't know how you can. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how you can call it that. I mean, I, I've been yeah. trying to be very fair about this and not go overboard because I think that's a word that's used too much. It's thrown around a lot. I agree, but I mean, because I, mean, I was I was speaking you, against it in Ukraine. Yeah, yeah, uh, but. To ev- but, evidence to support my position is that that in the first month in Gaza they killed more women and children than Russia's killed in Ukraine in two years. Yeah, like I mean, it's just I don't know. Like I said, I mean, just the case that we've laid out here so briefly just seems to make make the case for me. I don't know. Yeah, I just. Um, but we're you know we're that well. I guess that's the other. The last thing to say is that the um, the Senate at least just passed the bill spending tens <laughs> of tens of billions of dollars on aid to all these countries, yeah. including no millions. Wait, sorry, mil- mil- military aid? Or are we? Yeah, it was like fourteen. It's like fourteen. Now I'm stuck. Is it billion or I've, million? I have no like, clue. I'm trying to think of what we usually give. Um, I know they I think have... that we usually, we usually give like three billion in aid to uh, Ukraine. To no, no, to uh, Israel every year oh, for do military we? aid. Okay, um, and it's fourteen now. Oh, so like that's... in this bill, and yeah, it has to be right. Like, yeah, because they're they're trying to pay Ukraine for a year, so sixty million wouldn't be enough. It had to be sixty billion, right? Yeah, I would think so. Gosh, I wish I'd written that down though. Just now, I'm kind of confused about it. It's got to be billions though. Yeah. Um. So that you know, they just they just did an aid package to Israel, Ukraine, um, Taiwan, and uh, AUKUS, which is our military alliance with um, the UK and Australia. Yeah. Uh, for close to a hundred billion dollars total. Wow. Um. And that has that passed both chambers billion. or just? I, I know it's passed the Senate. Oh, but it don't get through the house. I don't know about the house. I, I, I would be shocked. I mean, the house. I is, wouldn't. The house is a shit show, dude. Um, and that's good. Since like, we already said that word once. We oh, may yeah, as well. Might as well yeah, might as well roll with it, right? Yeah. But it is like I mean, it's like nothing's getting through the house like that. I mean, mm-hmm. I could be wrong. Like I say, I know you say you wouldn't be surprised. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised either. But I just don't see it. Um, yeah. Because there's enough. I'm sorry. I heard that. Gosh, I wish I'd written. I was. I heard that report when I was not in a position to write anything down. So the numbers are are escaping you. Yes. Oh, um, it's too much at any rate. Yeah, it's definitely too much. It's <laughs> yeah. far too much. Um, especially for a lost war in Ukraine, and to support a <laughs> a genocide in Gaza, and to antagonize the Chinese into a war in. In the East, I'll just say generally, because both the AUKUS payments and the Taiwan payments are are both an antagonistic towards China. Yeah. So, I don't know why we're so intent on uh. And just uh, well, okay. So this is one of the points that that Putin made over and over again. Yeah. Um, as he said, look, if if you want to, you have to accept that the world's changing. Yeah. 
that there are other players, that there's other nations out there that want to say in things besides the United States. Yeah. If you approach every problem from an imperialist perspective, you're going to have problems. Yeah. If you if you approach the problem through uh, you know wanting to be diplomatic and to to trade and to accept that other nations have interests too, yeah, then we can move forward. But yeah. if everything is about what the U.S. wants and it's the U.S.'s way or nobody else's, <coughs> you're not going to solve anything. No, you're just going to create more problems. Mm -hmm. And the thing I'd remind everybody is this is being done in our name. Like this is done, like like in in the name of of our country. Like this isn't just like and with our money with our money and and it makes us look bad like it's just i don't i, I don't know it irritates me that that we can have the arrogance we do yeah it's hard not to look at us foreign policy and say we're just a bully yeah yeah and and we don't have to be that way that's no. what that's what gets me is like we there are other options mm -hmm. um but like i said there's no there's no will right now in in Congress, at least, to to go that a different direction. Now, I think the people want a different direction, but it just goes to show how well democracy works. Yeah, because like we're not going to get it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, it's <laughs> yeah. well. Uh, um, just as one final note to close up here, uh, <coughs> I did watch Dave Smith's interview with RFKJ about the Gaza thing. Oh, did you? Yeah. Um, so what did you think? Because I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah, I did too. I found it really interesting. Um, I, I got a kick out of the vice president talk at the beginning. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> that made me laugh. Um, yeah. that was, it was kind of dark, but, uh, I, I'm glad that I'm glad that RFKJ can joke about can some laugh of these about things. That, yeah. I mean, it has been 60 years, you know, like, yeah. um, it, uh, I, I thought that they both made good cases. I mean, I, like I come down with Dave, I, there were some, <laughs> I was frustrated with both of them at points during the yeah. the discussion. Yeah. Um, certainly, but, uh, but it was very interesting and it, it was, um, it was a good representation of both sides of the argument, I thought. So, yeah, uh, well, that I do was, recommend that was to my, people to go listen. That was my takeaway. That's the reason mm -hmm. I had kind of pushed you to listen to it yeah. was because I, I felt like RFK made that case better than anybody I've heard. Yeah. And I like that at the end of it, he said that Dave made his side of the case better than anybody he'd heard. Yeah. I uh, mean, that's that's the reason, like I say, I recommended so. that you. I definitely recommend it to the listeners. Dave mm -hmm. Smith, part of the problem. Just look for the episode with RFK. Well, there's been like five episodes with yeah, RFK. Yeah, but the most, the most recent, recent one. one. Yeah, the most recent one. Um, um, end of January, early February. I don't remember when it was. Yeah. But um, uh, yes. Um, yes, it was definitely worth the listen. It was both... Both of them were presenting good information. Yeah. Um, I wish they had like signed up to do a longer podcast. Like yeah. had had went like two hours on that because they both had so much to say and they were kind of kind of bickering with the, each other to get their points in. Mm -hmm. Like a longer form thing would have been nice. There. Yeah. Well, and maybe something with a moderator would have been better. Yeah. To to control the conversation. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I mean it's Dave's podcast, and I felt like he gave RFK a lot of room to yes, I agree. to talk. Um, but it, but he said in the podcast after that, Dave did that it was hard for him that mm -hmm. like because like he well you can see it on his face yeah well that's well he also oh, is, you, I, so, you I listen listen, audio, so I listen so I listen but right. Dave said the same thing so one of the responses he had gotten back from people was the faces he was making throughout yeah and Dave was like I didn't realize that but after watching it he's like I apologize he was like I didn't he's like all of that was natural he was like he, he was like that's just. That was how I felt, and I was apparently expressing it. <laughs> yeah, the, you, there, you actually hear it at one point um, where uh, there's some history thing that RKJ <laughs> is talking about, and <laughs> and he's like, "I see you shaking your head, so I know you disagree with my interpretation yeah. or whatever." Because yeah, because Dave was sitting there just just, just shaking, yeah, his head like, yeah, eyes in the back of his head. Yeah, exactly. Um, but it was it was definitely a worthy listen. So yeah, so people should listen to that. It's a it's a good one. Yeah. Um, no matter what side you're on, you're like said, pretty both well sides represented, are well so. represented. I thought so. Oh, um, yeah. So that, I guess that's the last little bit. I just wanted to put that out there before we. I didn't want to talk yeah. about it. I just wanted to put that out there for our listeners to to check out Dave Smith's part of the problem with RFKJ 
from either end of January or early February. Yeah. Um, it is on Gaza. It is absolutely worth a listen if you have any interest. Yeah. I mean, this is a, it's a big deal. Like mm-hmm. I said, we're, spending, we're spending at least 14... Yeah. We're, we're, literally, we're spending at least 14 we're, million, but I think it's 14 <laughs> billion. Well, well <laughs> we're bankrupting this. the country to do this. Yeah. So it's it's worth having an opinion on. Yeah. <laughs> I'll say that. Yeah. So Certainly. Uh, all right. Well, let's wrap up. Um, right. So uh, you can follow us on Facebook. You can subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, <laughs> Podbean. Uh, like and share, comment, subscribe. Um, you can always email me at michael at thelibertymike.com. It's M-I-C-H-A-E-L in case you're having trouble spelling my name. Uh, michael at thelibertymike.com. Anything. I, uh, I do my best to respond to everything that gets sent. If not, through email on the podcast <laughs> and, uh, and I like comments. So I appreciate that. So, and if there's some story we're missing or some perspective that we're missing, send it to me. I, I absolutely read everything that gets sent to me. Yeah. So just know that. Um, and, uh, we expect to be back. I mean, yeah. Yeah, next like week I have, a little dicey. Well, yeah, I mean, I have surgery, but it's early in the week. I should be okay. Good about Thursday. Friday. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be um, the plan so, at least. So I expect that we'll be back here next week. So I'm going to say so. Okay. And we've got one in the can. Remember if just in case if, <laughs> if we got a real problem that we just can't solve, um, we won't call vanilla ice. We'll <coughs> throw in the canned. <laughs> economics episode yeah wasn't that from his song was it i don't you know you got a problem yo i'll solve it something like that <laughs> anyway all right so uh yeah we expect to be back next week when we finally get this right and in the meantime try to stay free life short live free ciao later mm-hmm.